What is the biggest misconception of you? What's one thing people think about you, but it's not true? Gosh, the biggest misconception people may think about me. I'm short. They think that I'm short. A lot of people think that I'm really short when you meet me, but I'm actually 6'1". So I'm pretty tall. Okay. And uh, then they also they also think like you know um, I'm some like crazy arrogant guy. Okay. You know that does magic that just happened to get his hand on magic tricks, which is totally wrong, because. Well, no, that's actually right. So no, yeah, no, they actually might have a good, good maybe. I don't know. I'm not even sure sometimes what I am, but. I think I think another one is like I, I fake reactions on like my um on my magic right, mm. so yeah this has been like a big old propaganda. People think that I faked reactions. And what's crazy is you know, um, for the entirety of like you know magic history, like there's always been a person in on a trick. Heck, even like Copperfield, if you make a woman levitate, you you know she's in on it. Mm. You came for the experience, so. Uh, the biggest misconception is that I, I fake it. No, I don't fake it. I'm still playing by the rules. You know what I mean? I'm making the experience for the person over across the screen to enjoy it. So I want them to really, you know, soak it in and enjoy every little moment of the magic that happens because magic is no fun if you're always trying to solve it. Mm. And uh, I definitely try to make it solve proof. And every trick I ever do, people can see it live at a show. So every trick you ever see. There's not one trick I'm ever going to do that I'm not going to be able to do to you in person. Mm. Craziest rumor you heard about yourself? Craziest rumor I heard about myself? Yeah. I sold my soul to do magic. That's the crazy, that's, that is the craziest rumor. Now, is that true? Yes, I did. Sell my soul to do magic. Um, who would I sell it to? That's up to you to find out. And it's up to me to keep a secret. So I'm gonna keep it a secret. You wanna, you wanna take some, some guesses, man, DJ Small? I have no guesses, but people watching this mm -hmm. uh, can leave a comment on the YouTube and uh, tell us what they think. Who do you think I sold my soul to? Now, is there a question you hate to answer? Is there something people ask of you that you just cannot stand? Question I hate to answer. Um, how'd you do that? It's none of your business how I did it. I'm, I'll put it like this, right? Asking a magician, you know, how he did a trick, right? It's like asking the Illuminati to join. <laughs> Look, you not going to join if you ask. We tell you when you want to. Mm. So that's the most annoying question. That and can you make my wife disappear? I swear to God, <laughs> as many guys that are married and very unhappy in their marriage, they really want their wife to just go bye-bye, right? Or vice versa. You know, there's some women out there. My goodness. I did, it was an Instagram video where a girl was like, uh, I did a magic trick to her. She was like, wow, could you make my boyfriend disappear? We're not going to say if I did it or not. Okay. But I was totally willing to. Maybe I did. Not so sure. But that happens a lot. So people want other people to vanish. I think society is somewhat kind of cruel. To some degree, because we like we want people to go and just never be back. It's not like make them vanish and reappear. It's like no, I just want them deleted from life, terminated, term terminated. That's some evil stuff, man. If you think about it, that's why you can't give magical powers to everybody, man. You just you can't. Do you care what people think of you? No, I don't care what people think of me. I really don't. Like, I it's weird because like I don't care what people think of me. What I more so care about um, is people not feeling the sense of what I say matters. Uh, so it's not so much what they're thinking. I just want them to feel what I, what I have to say, right? So let me put it like this. Like I, I put on Instagram. I put a burp. Oh, my gosh. I got that on camera. I have to burp again. Excuse me. So I put on Instagram, I am a god, and everyone went ballistic, right? Everyone went ballistic, like you're not a god. But in my head, I honestly believe I am a god. 
Like, you can't tell me I'm not a guy. It's the only word I feel comfortable being called, right? I like to use high frequency words. And I suggest for everyone to find their high frequency word and to attach it to themselves because you are, you're only going to attract what you are. So I, when I say I am a God, like, I'm a God. Like, what, what, what else do we, I mean, look, and then even to that, like, God probably gets a billion complaints every day. God ain't answering everybody. You know what I mean? God got to handle godly duties. You can keep complaining, but it's not like God's ever going to really, you know, turn around and care about how you feel about the whole ordeal, you know, when it comes down to the nitty gritty. He, he has a lot to attend to. And I feel like that's that's like the life of a celebrity, a, a entrepreneur, a CEO. Those are gods right there in your face doing God work, you know? The mere mortals will never understand. But I think everybody has God potential. Yeah, everybody does. Are you honest when you say that, that you don't care what people think of you? I am. I'm was, very honest. Was there a time when you did care, though? Yeah, it was, man. It was. It can, was a time. Can, can you pinpoint the turning point there? It was a time when I, I did care about what people thought about me. Now... That was like probably when I was in like elementary school, going all the way through high school. And then something just snapped at me one day. And, and it was so much more of when I had got hit with Crohn's disease at like age 12. And I had Crohn's disease. I was like, yo, I cannot like live my life like this anymore. You can't sit here with the disease limiting you and then let the people around you limit you too, right? You already are poisoning yourself. You have a disease. And then the people's thoughts around you are poisoning you, right? At age 12 was my turning point. I realized how important life was and how important life was to live for myself. Mm. How important life was to live very um, uh, uh, courageously, you know? It's bravery that wins the day. Uh, the number one fear is, is public speaking. Second, arachnophobia. Like, just think about that. The number one fear is public speaking. But the second biggest fear is arachnophobia. I honestly don't get how spiders don't scare people more than people do. And that's because we bully each other left and right. That's all people do. That's all we do is we bully. So we live in a bullying society. Though we say we're anti-bullying, it's funny how we find so many bullies on the internet you know, in real life, jealousy rules people's lives, envy rules people's lives, you know. It's all these mixtures of emotions. Doesn't make sense. Why do we live in a world like this? And my job is to show people you can choose another direction. When I see a person um, um, doing something great, it gives me motivation. It lets me know that my dream is possible. It's a different thought for me. It's never the thought of, Oh my God, I'm so mad. How'd you get that opportunity? I deserved it. I'm not even that type of person. I will never be that type of person because it doesn't do anything for me. It only shows me that if I have to say that your dream should not be possible, I just by default tell myself my dream isn't possible. So my thoughts can't even go through that room. I've never been that type of person either. I more so got depressed when I was younger off of what people said, mm. right? Never really hated anybody else for what they were doing. Um, so it made it really easy for me to trans just transition for seeing other successful people and just giving them the praise that they deserve, you know? It's funny, we even use the word praise, and I talked about, like, gods, you know? Like, we praise gods. So I'm praising people for their accomplishments, which is kind of, in a sense, like, it's weird, it's so weird. When you give praise to the gods, you get something back in return, and that's, that's what I do. I give praise to people with great accomplishments. Now, when people do care about another person's opinion, it can lead to health issues. You mentioned depression. Yes. Uh, there's a certain type of level of stress one can get from doing that. Uh, anxiety. Uh, worst case, suicidal thoughts. Did you face any of those other obstacles aside from depression back then when you did care about another person's opinion of you? Mm -hmm. You know, it was weird. When I was a kid, I never told anybody this. So this is the first time this is coming out. When I was a kid, man, uh, I got bad grades. I think this was like in fifth grade. And, um, and I, you know, I cared so much to get good, good grades because I just seen the depression, you know, uh, like, you know, 
my parents face from me not getting them. I sat down and I was like, yo, I was ready to sell my soul as a kid. I literally had this whole contemplation and thought and was in the process of selling my soul for good grades, right? And um, I stopped, you know, because life just took a big hit to me. And um, it's, th it's this pressure to be what other people want you to be. Um, it led to me like, I really think th the idea of this pressure led to me having Crohn's disease, right? Me getting sick from this. Like the sad, sadness is already a disease in itself, but we know that some diseases cause other diseases, right? So you may have disease one and it's causing disease two. Mm -hmm. Then you're gonna get disease three and then the last one is probably cancer or you know, some, some tumor or something like that, right? And that's from you not dealing with internal traumas. Now, crazy thing is I actually healed myself with my Crohn's. Uh, a lot of people don't know this. I haven't like came out publicly about it, but I've actually healed myself with Crohn's disease. How'd I do it? I went vegetarian for two years straight. Um, and then I also just did a lot of thinking. You know what I mean? I was like, yo, I gotta, I gotta be more honest with myself. I gotta be more honest around the people I'm around. I'm not always, I'm not trying to be cool. I think that's kind of like whack. I see a lot of people in hip hop, you know what I mean? Like, and they're always trying to be cool. I don't care about looking cool for you. You know why? Because I'm already confident that my cool is cool. You know what I mean? You can't describe my cool. My cool don't look like that guy's cool. My cool ain't like that guy's cool. My cool is my cool, right? And I got, I, I, it's the fear. I think fear rules our lives and fear makes us sick. Well, fear makes us 100% of the way sick. Now, when you did face depression back then, did you uh, seek counseling, therapy, some sort of medication with a doctor or anything of that nature back then? I seek knowledge. Um, it's weird enough to say, I think the first thing we have to seek is knowledge. And then, and then we do a lot of, we do a lot of seeking outside ourselves, right? And I'm not against counseling, I'm not against medicine, I'm not against any of that. But we always look outside ourselves for the answer. The answer is already inside you. That's why you know something's wrong, right? And I think a lot of people don't spend time with themselves thinking. Thinking is almost like forbidden to people, right? Why would I go into this thought category? I let myself go into every type of thought now at this point, like super bad thoughts, thoughts I probably shouldn't be having. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you know, really great, amazing thoughts, right? But I love this freedom of being everywhere in my mind because it'll let me know that, you know, if no one else finds me sane, I'm convincing myself that I'm sane. And I think it's that conflict of like the uh, inner person. You know what? Um, there's a great book. It's called The Game of Tennis. Um, it was an acting coach. And uh, her name was Kia. And she said, she said, there's a book called The Game of Tennis, and it says in there, you have two people inside you, person one, person two. Person one is trying to tell, is trying to protect you all the time, all the time. And this is the part that's speaking to us all the time. This is why we can't get to person two. Person two is the one that's like free willy nilly. They will jump off a building, you know, they will do all types of crazy stuff, death defying stunts. This is like really what's inside you. And number one is like, don't cross the street. Like the light is red, dude. Don't do it, you might get hit by a car. Person one's always speaking. You find the most successful people in life, the most healthiest people in life, are the people who know how to shut up person number one when there's absolutely no um, fear involved. Like, you're not gonna die, you know? Like, most people probably be really nervous to be at this interview right now, you know? Like, they're like all in themselves and like, wonder like, oh man, I'm so scared to be in an interview. What is gonna happen when you post this, right? And, and me, I'm like, I know I'm not gonna die at the end of this interview. I'ma still be alive, still gonna be living. So to me, I find that uh, I, try, I shut person number one when there's nothing that's gonna kill me. Um, and I let person number two come out. Um, at this point, do you feel like you need it? <sighs> do I need counseling? Yeah. Do I need medicine? No. I don't think I do. You know, I, I don't think I do. Not at this point. It, who knows if in the future. But, no, nah, I don't think I need counseling. I, I think I need, um, for the most part, as long as I have people in general to speak to, 
my mind, if they agree or disagree, I'm okay. Mm. Um, any advice, maybe somebody going through some of these obstacles right now, especially depression, because you definitely uh, faced that yeah. went back then at 12 years old, very young. Um, circumstances could be different for everybody, of course, but is there any general advice you would share? Maybe somebody facing that? Here's my advice. Again, from... From my perspective. From your perspective and, again, stemming from caring yeah. about another person's opinion, that attributing to that. Okay. Um, here's my advice, my personal advice, on how to deal, and it's dealing with other people's opinions. Uh, yeah. Or their their you know their own inner struggles. Right. How how do you let, let me let me re rephrase okay. the question. Share some advice mm -hmm. on somebody that cares so much about another person's opinion. It can lead to health issues such as depression that you face. Gotcha. Ah, all right. Here we go. Here we go. You guys, ready? Here's the big golden advice because this is really good. Listen to your intuition. Even though you care about the other person. That's the, that's the you that is very emotional and caring and loving. But at times, you're right. If it's the inner you speaking, it, it may be God. You know what I mean? Your intuition is like the closest thing you have to God speaking to you. Listen to it. God's never wrong. God is you. God is a you trying to tell you what to do. Don't let fear rule your life, right? You rule your life. Everything is your choice, your decision. Don't get depressed off the idea. You're going to live at the end of the day, right? Um, if you continue the habit of continually, you know, taking other people's opinions and caring about them too much um, because you don't want to disappoint them, um, you will drive yourself to these very dark ends of, of your, your life. But if you can refrain from that, I promise you at the end of the journey, you'll find yourself with more life, more fulfillment, and you won't, you won't ever get to these really dark ends, you know. Now, I'm not promising that, but it's just from my personal experience. Now, do you care what people think about your magic? You know, I do care about what people think about my magic. So, there are some tricks I do that people just think are stupid. But I'm like, yo, that's good. I, I think I like the idea of, like, something being kind of, like, stupid. Um, there's a trick I do where I make a woman pregnant. Um, and then like a baby hand comes out of her stomach and it freaks everyone out because no one sees it coming. Uh, now people describe that as stupid and I was like, yo, that's a great opinion. Like you calling my trick stupid might be exactly what I want this to feel like, you know, stupid. Like, why would you do that? Why would you even ask a woman? Well, well first of all, sometimes I ask a woman that she's pregnant. Then I say, okay, if you're not, then I'm going to get you pregnant. It's like two things you probably shouldn't say to a woman. I've asked women like, hey, if I ask you this question, what are you going to do? Slap you. Great, but every time I do it, I don't, get, I don't get slapped. I don't know why. I just get away with stuff that, I don't know how I get away with stuff, man. I really don't. I should probably stop it at some point. Like maybe I might get too old and it might become creepy to do that trick. Uh, but I do care about what people think about magic. I really do. Honestly, I do. Um, because I wanna, I wanna cultivate a show for people to enjoy. Now, to some degree, it's weird because it's like an inner struggle with the artist and the people. And you have like, this genius that you want to present to them and you know it's genius and maybe they won't get it just just now but if you give it some years it's like oh wow this is actually like you know really good it's a, it's a weird balance and that's the whole listening to the interview um, that I was telling people to kind of go with because sometimes you do have genius they just can't realize it what are your keys to success my keys to success yeah what are some things that make you successful good that's a good question dude that's a freaking good question oh my god all right keys to success consistency right um the idea of not feeling entitled uh i don't feel entitled to anything like you know i i try my best to detach unless it's something i triggered you know what i mean like a person working for me something like that i feel entitled for you to work for me but other than that life's opportunities that they hand to me i do not feel entitled to them Right. Um, do not be attached to something, um, you know, emotionally. You know what I mean? Uh, it's weird enough. You have to have like some type of like detachment from things. Uh, one thing I find really, really um, common in every successful person I meet is that they're not attached to an idea. 
They're not attached to sometimes even people, right? Sometimes mm-hmm. it can even be people. People are tough, right? But if you can, you are like a, you are like Alexander the Great. You are like Genghis Khan. Like you can just like, you'll be a monster in this life. Um, and then also being willing to sacrifice hours of sleep to work, right? I mean, if, if the average person works a nine to five, right? And then you're working from like nine to like uh, 12 a.m., you know? You, who's more likely to make more money and who's more likely you know, to become better at what they do? You gotta clock in a lot of hours. I hate sleeping, I hate sleeping. Like, people around me are like, how can you stay up? Like, shut up, I'm trying to go to sleep and I get depressed, sometimes I get depressed because I'm like, I'm up at like five in the morning you know, or four in the morning and I wanna talk to a bunch of people. I'm like, yo, let's go do this, let's do that. But I gotta wait until they wake up. So the ability to stay up, be energized, be happy about everything is, is tremendous. You know, you got to be able to express yourself um, um, to the fullest extent every little minute, every little moment. No, it goes, it goes like this. It's, it's years, months, weeks, days, hours, minutes, seconds, milliseconds, moments. Right, because they never teach you about the moment. I'm always in the moment, right? I'm happy about every little moment. I try to be as happy as possible. And if you can stay happy for 24 hours and the next 24 hours, you're on your way to success, buddy. Because everyone loves a happy person, you know. Even people who can see, who can be optimistic, you know. It's weird. They they always tend to succeed even through the worst times, right? And that takes a lot of confidence. So confidence too. Of course, but you probably heard that one. It's a cliche.